Hello everyone and welcome back to another video about the cheap PC I found on Craigslist. It had a 2070 in it, an RTX 2070, and I have replaced it with an RTX 5060 Ti 16GB. I know it has an older generation of PCI Express. This system uses 3.0 and the card can do 5.0. And I know that it's going to be CPU bottlenecked in a lot of cases, but you know, I'm, I'm curious, maybe you're curious, how well is this going to perform? Is it worth upgrading the video card in an older system like this? In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, there really wasn't much of a benefit from changing the card out when I was using the tweaked settings that helped the RTX 2070 get above 60 frames per second on average. It was about a 10% increase, and that sounds terrible if you're going to spend $450 to replace this GPU. But what it's showing you is that the CPU is most likely the bottleneck here, and if we crank the render resolution, uh, the render resolution scaling up to 100% means you know native 1440p, and we turn the graphical settings up to maximum, we are still getting a better result than the tweaked settings on the 2070. So theoretically, we could crank this up to 4K using somewhere around a 1440p render resolution and DLSS to upscale it and have a really great gameplay uh, experience here at that higher resolution. So the card, the 5060 Ti, is unlocking higher resolutions and higher graphical settings, even if it's not really meaningfully boosting the frame rate. Monster Hunter Wild seems to show a lot less of a CPU bottleneck. The new card was way better at the same settings and stayed above 60 frames per second. I recorded a second run at the highest settings with the highest RT settings enabled, and it still averaged around 53 FPS, which was higher than the 2070 could do at the very low settings I was using to test that. This was while recording too, so you could probably expect a few more frames per second to be clawed back if you're not recording while you're playing. In control, at the same settings that was used for the RTX 2070 test, again, like for like, the 5060 Ti in this system destroyed the 2070 and allowed for nearly double the frame rate. Wait, frame rate. It allowed for nearly double the frame rate. Cranking the settings up to the newest ultra raster and ray tracing settings with the same render resolution still outperformed the high settings on the RTX 2070. So it's your choice here. Same graphical quality with higher frame rates or higher frame rates and higher graphical quality, but you know, the frame rates will just be a little bit higher. In the fighting games like Street Fighter 6 VI and Tekken 8, I still saw a few hitches around scene transitions or big effects, but I didn't have to turn any graphical settings down this time. So, I mean, that's a win. It's not really a meaningfully different experience though. I think you could just crank up the resolution again here and still deal with those things. They weren't gameplay breaking, so I mean, what the heck. The Final Fantasy Dawn Trail benchmark showed definite increases in areas that were probably GPU bound and less of an increase in CPU bound areas. But that again means that there's probably room to turn up the resolution uh, and play the game at 4K, let's say, with all the settings maxed out and still get a decent frame rate. I didn't see any points in this game where the CPU was enough to hold me back from playing the game. Uh, I, I really think this game is perfectly fine at 60 frames per second, even if you're used to higher. And I would actually use frame generation or something on this game to make it smoother if you really wanted that. Lastly, I just want to throw Battlefield 6 in here. I decided to try it on this system because it is compatible. It has secure boot and all that kind of stuff. And it ran great. I mean, you could have a good time playing this. It's not competitive shooter level of frame rate here, but for Battlefield, I think it's, you know, serviceable. It's fine. You can have a fun time playing this game. So what's the point? Adding the new card like this isn't going to solve the CPU's weaknesses, but it will unlock higher graphical settings and resolutions in most cases. The tests show that more CPU bottlenecks appear when you have a faster card, which is kind of obvious, I guess. But it didn't make the upgrade worthless. That said, if you're looking at doing something like this, you have to decide whether it's worth, you know, $400 plus to buy a 5060 Ti when you're really not meaningfully changing the gameplay experience. You're just improving the graphics. Uh, I guess that's up to you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, and in the description, I'm going to link a video to Hardware Unboxed that explains how the uh, older versions of PCI Express 
affect the 8 gigabyte cards that have come out for this generation of cards, like the RTX 5000 and the RX 9000 series cards, you'll want to watch that because, I mean, basically the point is stay away from the 8 gigabyte cards. But it's especially true for the NVIDIA cards that only have 8 gigabytes of VRAM on older systems. So make sure you check that out if you're considering upgrading a system like this one. Thanks for watching. Again.